Recapping yesterday's work. Formulas. Let's work with two formulas. I want to test if you remember them, because like I said, I'm predicting it to be on your exam one. So if I were to anti-diff ax plus b to the power of r, where r is not equal to negative one dx, what is the formula for this one again? Can I please have Sebi? Uh, Good. Fantastic. Okay, so it's simple in the idea. A, if you differentiate it inside, you're going to move it outside and you say times A. So if you times A, divide A. What you normally do as well is you bring the power down. So if you times it by the power on the top, then you divide it by the power on the bottom. So that's where A times R plus 1 comes from. And R plus 1 is the opposite of minusing one. Normally you subtract the power, now you have the power. Okay, so this is one of them. What's the other one? If I had any diff of ax plus b, where r does equal to, so I'll write up here, r doesn't equal to negative one, but here r does equal to negative one dx. What is the formula for this, Gary? Fantastic. What's the one thing I want you to add? Mod. Fantastic. Mod of AX plus B. Because remember when you anti-diff it, it could be a negative in the inside or a positive in the inside. I don't know. Okay. So these are your two formulas that I said yesterday that is likely it's going to come up in your exam in terms of the type of questioning. And the reason why is because that's not in your formula sheet. Okay. Uh, unless they've changed that. Uh, I haven't checked the latest formula sheet so then they might have it but I'm pretty sure they don't have it in that full form and so that's why you can't use it okay or if they do have it that means they're going to change the question so that you can't apply it so easily so they might do a definite integral uh, between two points they might change it to a square root put a square root in there and suddenly it makes it a bit harder for students okay um, but in the last from 2009 to 2015 I'm pretty sure it wasn't on the formula sheet unless they change it for 2016 and 17, okay? So those are your two formulas right there. That's what I went through yesterday. And these were the examples and I can get you to sort of go through them from, from the VCO examples. Um, and it carries on all the way to 2015. Same thing, one every year, exam one. Same questions, two or three, it's one of them, right? So expect 2017 to be the same. So exercise 11C is exactly what you're gonna be getting for the exam one, question two or three. Okay, so that's for your practice there. 11 and 11C, if anything you take out of my lessons, do that one. All right. On that, we're going to go back now to the next two antiderivatives so that you finish off C and D. D, you need to know how to find the antiderivative of exponential functions, and so our case is kx. Okay. Then you also have antidiff of sine of x, and you also have antidiff of cosine of x. Okay, because so far what you've learned is anti-diff of a polynomial function, which is anti-diff of ax to the power of n dx. And then we move that to anti-diff of ax plus b to the power of r dx. That's the next three that I'm going to go through today. Okay, so this is just your basic, these are going to be on your formula sheets. Okay, that's always on your formula sheet. I'm pretty sure that's not on. I should check it again, I'll let you guys know. I'm pretty sure that one's not on. Or if it is on, the log one's not on. Okay, so let's go through the exponential one first. Okay, and then we're going to go through sine, cosine, and get you to do some exercises. Yeah, simple and easy to end the term. Here we go. So this is your formula uh, formula over there. It's e to the power of kx dx equals to one on k e to the power of kx plus c, and it's the same concept again. You don't have to memorize it because whatever you do for the derivatives, you do the opposite for any diff. See, normally derivative, if I gave you e to the power of 3x and I said find the derivative, what you would have done is you would have said do y dx is equal to, derive the inside, so the derivative of 3x is 3, multiply 2, derive the outside. And we know the derivative of an exponential is itself, so that's why it's 3, I mean e to the power of 3x. So if you want to go backwards now, if you want to undo that, 
get rid of the 3. So how do you get that 3? You found the derivative of 3x. So that's why they say to go backwards, divide it. See, if you just took that and you divide it by 3, you're all good. And that's where the formula is coming from. See that k, divide it. That's, not, that's what they're trying to say. They're saying divide the k because you times the 3, divide the 3. And voila, you're back to the square 1 with a plus c. Okay. Yes, Josh. Can you add it? Yes, you can. So you can do kx plus b e like that, and it'll be the same thing. It'll be the same thing because when you find the derivative, it's got to be k, so it'll be one on k. Yeah, you're right. Hey, Jack. No, he's not here today. Yeah, Jack Matthews. Yeah. yeah Okay, so that's your anti-diff there, and so we're going to go through some examples here. So, oh, happens to be the same example I just made up. I must love my number threes. There you go. F of, F of 3x, and I was probably just trying to show you the logic. Here we go. So anti-diff of e to the power 4x, same thing. It's 1 divided by the 4, e to the power 4x. Don't forget the plus c. Unless they say an antiderivative, it's okay. But when they say find the antiderivative, make sure to put a plus c. Okay. Next one. Try this one for me. Same thing. You can anti if you can derive individual terms, you can anti-derive individual terms. So I want you to anti-derive that quickly for me there. While I change the role. <laughs> What's your answer for this example? Let's go with Josh Nguyen. What's your answer? Oh, you didn't do it? Quickly do it. Quick and easy. Power, divide that power. Coefficient. So if you found the derivative, find the antiderivative. Just divide. Yeah. Quick and easy. See full formula. If it's e to the power 4x, it's 1 over 4. If it's e to the power 3x, it's 1 over 3. Good. That's it. It's just putting the negative power to negative one, so one on negative one, and that's a positive one since so on one. So if you answer it, it's just negative e to negative x plus e to the x plus c. Hands up, you got that correct. Good. Too easy. Next one. Try this one. Find the equation of the curve. So now you're applying it. So you now, how do you anti derive trying to find the plus c? Remember, I said you want to find the plus c. They have to give you coordinates. So here we go, it says, if the gradient at the point x, y on a curve is given by, so they gave you the derivative, okay, you've got an equation you don't know, but you know the derivative is this. And the curve passes through 0 and 7.5. Find the equation of the curve. It's always the same thing. Okay, this sometimes comes up as question 5 or question 6 or 7, one of those two. And it's a, it's a calculus question where they want you to use the coordinates to find c, find the equation, find the derivative, normally it's a 6 or 7 question. 2 or 3 marks normally. This one is probably a 2. So work backwards. 5e to the 2x, you want to find the original equation. What is the original equation? In other words, I'm trying to say y equals to something, the derivative dy dx equals to 5e2x, find the antidiff to come back. So 
what you're trying to do. Yeah. On the end, you really can come back. So it's going to be a plus C. I don't want you to solve it. What's my battery going to it's a plus five, isn't it? Zero, five, one, two, it's two point five, yes, you're right. Good. Got our answers? <coughs> Give it another minute or two. Probably another minute. Trying to find the antiderivative of 5e 2x dx. Using your rule, take out the 5, makes it easier. Do I have it on the next slide? Yes, I do. <laughs> All right, let's go through the answers. What'd you get, Rex? I got 1, Fantastic, excellent. That is correct, same thing. So you're finding the antiderivative of your derivative equation. That will give you original equation, and same thing. Let's back to 5, take out 5. That's the power of 2. Remember, 2, you can do 1 over 2, so it becomes 5 times 1 over 2. e to x plus c. That's the issue. I don't know what the plus c is, but I do know when x is 0, y is 7.5, so I just apply it. 7.5, which is my y, x is 0, e to the power of 0 is 1, so half times 5 is 5 and a half, 5 out of 2 is 2.5. Subtract both sides and you get c equals 5. So yes. Your equation is correct. It should be 5 over 2 e to the power of 2x plus 5. Excellent. Was that easy? Good? Yeah, that's introduction to... No, it wasn't easy. It's an intro... <laughs> introduction to 5c, 5d. Now, next two formulas. Here we go, same concept. If you use the same understanding, if you know the derivative, you can find the antiderivative. I want you to figure out the formula for me. What would the antiderivative of sine kx plus b equal to? Logic. Always think about logic. If you were to derive something, when will it equal to sine? Deriv derivative of what would be sine? Cos. So remember when you derive the cos, it's equal to negative sine. So, if this is positive, then the antiderivative has to be new. Good. So it's going to be a negative cos. It's going to be a negative cos. And if you had kx plus b, remember if it was, always think of it like what would you do if you had a derivative? If I gave you cos of 2x, then the derivative would be what? So what would you do for the derivative? You find the derivative. So you can write the inside, you can write the outside. Now I know the derivative of cos is negative sine 2x. The derivative of the inside, which is 2. So you would normally say 2 times, and the derivative of the outside, negative sine of 2x. So if you're going backwards, remember it's always undoing everything you did. If you did times, you divide. So where did 2 come from? And 2 is the coefficient. So you can easily look at this and say, well, of any linear equation, mm -hmm. k is to be a linear equation, that k is going to have to be a 1 on k. Okay, but because that's a positive, I know the answer has to be a negative. Yeah? So that's why I know it's negative. 1 on k plus k is plus b plus c. Okay, but you don't have to memorize that. You see, it's, it's sort of like if you know how to do the derivative, you can do the undo the problem. Yeah? So, same thing with cos. What would cos be then? Any derivative of cos. So think about the derivative. Deri der the derivative of something gives you plus. We know sine. But there's a k. If you had sine of 2x, derivative of sine of 2x would be 2 plus x. So if you want to remove that 2, instead of times e, you're dividing. So what should the formula be? Yes, Pius? Yeah. Easily. 1 on k, sine k plus b plus c. 
Too easy. Yeah, they make you to do an exercise out of that. But there you go. Let's play this one. Did, did I give you the answer? Oh, God. <laughs> that was meant to be animated. You weren't really meant to get that. Yeah, whatever. The right of the inside, constant doesn't matter. That's a three derivative of the inside. It's three, so you want to undo it. One and three, just be careful. Any diff of sine is a negative. The derivative of cos is negative. Any diff of sine is negative. That's the only part that gets confusing. So if you want to do it in exam, I'm probably going to bet that put something like that in. Okay, because it's always the negative that students know what we get. Especially if you start putting the interval in, the negatives will always make it harder. So from one to three, or five to two, five. Anyways, there you go. And that's what you're doing for exercise 11C, 11D. So if I just summarize it for you, you've learned four different types. Any div um, of AX to the power of n, any polynomial. Any polynomial with a linear equation in it, so AX plus B to the power of R. Sometimes the R is the power of the negative 1, so it's a log. Okay, so that's 3 there. And you've got exponentials. Exponentials and circular functions. Cool. All right, and then obviously the left hand, right hand rectangle. So that's all we've talked about. We've talked about integration, which is the area under the curve. Hasn't linked to additive yet. We don't know that the additive is the area yet. Or you know, well, you know that from last year, but you don't know why. Okay, so you want add, uh, integration, which is the sum of all rectangular areas, which is the area under the curve. Now you're just learning how to find the additive of different curves. You know the additive of this, you know this, you know the additive of this, you know that, you know. E to the exponential in no curves. Yeah? In the next few sessions, I'm going to then talk about definite integrals, so error between two points. And once you know that, then we can start talking about fundamental theorem of calculus. Then you'll know why it's the area. Okay, and once you know that, that summarizes everything together. And then applications. We're good. Chapter 11 down. Easy? Yeah? Always easy. All right. There we go. So that's the end of that session there. I'm going to put up exercise 11.